good afternoon everyone uh, today we are going first of all thank you all for joining this webinar uh, today we are going to talk about how to create ai products that people can trust and adopt why i believe this topic is important because uh, uh, we as uh, business people as product owners as developers we have a lot of ideas and we have a particular view of the world and we think that uh if we bring forth our ideas if we uh, bring our ideas if uh, we basically bring our ideas and create products out of them and we believe that those products would be beneficial uh, to our users they would bring value in the lives of our users but uh what we fail to what i see different people fail to recognize is that a product is just not a product it has a lot of context around it it has a lot of infrastructure around it and those that infrastructure needs to be supportive to the ideas and supportive to the mental models that the uh, product are supportive uh, towards solving the problem that uh, the product tries to solve to be of utmost value to the users because as you know if no one if you have just built a product and no one is using the product Uh, or if the product is not usable then the product has no value it is similar to uh, uh to you know writing a story maybe you have a great story to tell so writing a story or writing a novel but not giving but every novel needs to have you know good uh, print uh, a good cover page to make the novel more endearing to the reader so similarly Uh, there are different best practices that ai products should have that are a little bit different uh, from uh, normal software products uh, ai product by definition are a little bit different from normal software products and we need to bring those best practices into our products as well mm, we'll look into those best practices and things that we should be doing uh, in a product uh, as we go forward in this webinar डेटा कलेक्शन एंड इवोल्यूशन सो डेटा ऑफकोर्स इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर एनी एय प्रोडक्ट सो डेटा कलेक्शन एंड इवोल्यूशन मैथड शुड बी ऑफ वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट थिंग प्रोडक्ट ऑनर शुड डू Mm-hmm. the correct mental models that the ai tries to communicate to the user should be correctly managed uh, good explainability should be there between ai and or rather the product and the users and uh, uh, user feedback should be taken in the correct manner uh, different there are um, uh, different errors when handling uh, ai products as well so so those types of errors and how to handle failure we'll also take a look at them and lastly we'll see how we can make better ai workflows so one of the core uh, things about uh, creating an ai product is um, the aspect of machine learning where you actually create a machine learning model that dra- essentially drives the ai product so this is a definition of machine learning i like best which is uh, taken from the geeks for geeks uh, uh, source uh, which is basically that machine learning is a field of study that gives computers the capability to learn without being explicitly programmed which means that you can the kind of uh, because we essentially are also uh, intelligent beings we can understand uh the patterns uh, that are there in different domains and ideally if you have uh, unlimited amount of time you can uh, explicitly program those instructions in a code but uh, you probably would not want to maybe it is not feasible computationally maybe it is not feasible to build that huge of a product uh, it is normally well, there are uh, some domains of uh, software that it is not advisable to explicitly program each and every uh, aspect 
uh, of the um, uh, user experience. So those are the areas in which you probably want to bring in machine learning, or you probably want to create an AI product. So once you have the machine learning model, this is what I understand by creating an AI product. Basically, you have data which feeds into a machine learning model, which generates predictions. The interesting aspect of this whole thing is that those predictions are not of value to the users unless you bring in a surrounding business process that essentially predicts or essentially gives actionable uh, actions or actionable path to the users. It needs to be those, those, those predictions that are coming from the machine learning model needs to be encapsulated in a, uh, in a uh, surrounding infrastructure in a context to be of use and value to the user. So creating that, that context essentially is what I feel uh, is one is one of the primary goals of uh, creating an AI product. So before going into what are the uh, contexts, uh, we should take a developer view of uh, the machine learning uh, or what the developer thinks when he's creating a machine learning model. Basically what he does is that he loads the data uh, he probably does some cleaning on the data. Uh, a lot of the data has uh, errors, and so he will go forward and clean the data. He will do some feature engineering. Feature engineering is essentially that uh, sometimes a lot of data is qualitative. For example, um, for example, the uh, color violet uh, is essentially a we, from a human point of view, understand the color violet. But machines would not understand the color violet. It needs to be fed data in terms of numbers. So what happens is that uh, in uh, machine uh, or in computer systems, uh, colors are divided into uh, into a three-point scale where uh, of RGB values, where each value is comes under from zero within a range of zero to fifty-five. Um, you know, on a two, 0 to 255 scale. So, so violet will come under a number uh, or will be divided into specific numbers on these scales, on this RGB format. So that aspect of it and other domains, feature engineering, what specific feature engineering to apply will be dependent on uh, that domain. And then we have the train test split, uh, model creation and model fitness evaluation, which means that, uh, for example, take into take, uh, for example, a teacher teaching class to understand if the students are uh, have actually understood the topic. Ideally, the teacher should not give uh, during the test. The teacher should not give any examples that she has already uh, used in the class. Uh, that would be the best method of understanding if the students have actually understood the material in the class. If they're able to answer those, uh, you can say, out of service, uh, examples. So ideally, uh, when you have a uh, data set, you would want to split the data set, uh, and then you would want to uh, uh, train the model on a portion of the data set and to understand if the model is good, uh, test the model on a different, uh, on the other uh, uh, sample of the data set and then understand if the model is actually able to give correct predictions or not. Once you have, you, once you have verified that the model is okay, you go forward with model deployment and uh, in production, uh, you go forward with model inference. Those again are another bag of uh, can say it. So all these things are different aspects that the developer needs to take care of during uh, machine learning model uh, development. So now that we know, let's first, uh, now that we know, have a small idea of how machine learning models get created, let's have a, uh, let's try to understand general ways in which uh, AIs can fail. Uh, of course, there is uh, IBM Watson, which is kind of the poster child of failed AIs, where uh, 
basically what happened was IBM Watson was making errors and downright dangerous cancer treatment advice, which for a medical AI is a total no-no. So it, it would depend upon the domain that you're trying to build the AI, what is a total no-no for your uh, product, but you need to take care of these aspects and you need to take care of other aspects that would, there are kind of common sense when creating uh, an AI product that you absolutely should do or should not do. Yeah. One of them is, of course, cut AI spending. You cannot cut AI spending. AI uh, research takes needs research uh, needs a lot of investment in terms of both manpower and uh, resources. I like this uh, example where even though China was uh, quite behind the U.S. in terms of uh, AI even a few years back uh, because the AI funding, financing, the amount of resources, China has been pumping in a lot of resources to uh, in AI research. They have kind of caught up with the, uh, the US in, in the number of papers that get uh, uh, published uh, each year in AI. India, of course, uh, because uh, there is not much AI research and spending in India is a distant third in this respect. Uh, another aspect is, of course, operating in a tech bubble. You have to be user focused. So a, a great example of this is this juicer. You don't need to, if this juicer had a lot of uh, features in it, but if you're making a juicer that costs $700, no one's going to buy it. So just focusing on the tech would not uh, suffice to make your AI product successful. You have to understand if it is usable, if people are actually going to buy it. Another way is, of course, if your AI product does not have a clear vision. I have personally worked with companies where they were just building, just in, for the sake of AI, they were uh, creating AI pilot after AI pilots, but Mm, what happened was they just had a lot of uh, pilots without anything going into production and they were just building or rather uh, burning uh, VC money without anything concrete uh, to show for them. Uh, so that is not how you should be uh, building air products. You should have concrete goal to work towards. Another aspect is uh, where there are uh, uh, tech first companies who think that uh, they should own each and every aspect of uh, the whole process. Uh, the disadvantage of that is that uh, is that uh, the uh, focus of the developers become fragmented when they are made to work on everything. If something is not the core focus of uh, the company, then I believe it should be outsourced out. If you're a search company, you should only do search. If you are a retail company, you should only do retail. Uh, if you are not a marketing company, then aspects or marketing uh, aspects of it or development that goes into marketing should probably be outside outsourced to a uh, third party uh, vendor. So for example, uh, one of my favorite examples is that um, uh, Apple has post its uh, store management software to Infosys. So I am seeing a lot of promise. So many of the big companies understand it and outsourcing a lot of the tech outside that is not core to their uh, primary goals. Another, of course, is the other end of the spectrum is complacency. Once you have, once you have successfully created a product, you should not become comfortable with this current successes. If you are if you're not constantly trying to reinvent yourself, you probably would be would go to uh, dust soon enough. Uh, another aspect of uh, AI is that it, it takes a lot of, uh, uh, it, you need to be very careful about uh, the time to market. An AI product is never almost complete. You never achieve 100% accuracy. But sometimes if you time, uh, if uh, you bring in an AI product early, you get an advantage which it is very hard for your competitors to beat. For example, even though some might argue that Google Home is a far better product than uh, Amazon Echo, Amazon Echo, because it was launched two years uh, before Google Home, still maintains two thirds of the market. 
another aspect uh, and another mistakes that in ai uh, developers make that they assume customers are like developers so what happens is that for developers um, ai products uh, or rather all software systems are essentially tools but for a normal user a software is an experience there is a difference between the two so for example if you if you are creating a, a wearable wearable device and if you are not going to make it fashionable which is what google did then it is not going to be adopted you cannot think that just the tech would bring the uh, customers uh, to the uh, product of course uh, this is my favorite uh, thing of all which is that even though a lot of companies are out there even though they are not actually doing ai uh, they claim that they are doing ai 40% of ai startups in europe don't actually use ai so i have seen a lot of this happen in the industry that is not what you should do so now that we understand some of the common sense things uh, what the has identified these aspects where uh, it is generally um, seen that uh, these uh, the uh, areas on the left hand side a possible ai application and the uh, and the problems on the right hand side should not be an ai application for example content recommendation such as netflix and all uh, predictions of future prices improving a user experience uh natural language uh, processing which means that you probably need to take, understand the intent uh, or rather if the users who will be submitting content and you need to understand the intent of the content from the user recognition of an entire class of entities such as face recognition very low occurrence events for uh, such as fraud which probably happens one in 100000 or 1 million which which has a very very low probability of occurring in Uh, and absolute context or showing dynamic content such as facebook these are generally very good uh, examples of implementing ai possible non ai applications are maintaining predictability i don't want if i'm going uh, to my bank website i don't want my bank website to show different amounts at different times of the day we want static content or we do uh, do not want uh, errors at all um, in bringing errors if essentially brings down the credibility of the website or let's say uh, we want complete transparency maybe i have submitted an application in the government um, government websites are generally areas where you don't want the ai to work at all you want complete transparency you want a high speed of development if your time to market is very small and you do not uh you want to beat your competition it is advisable to not use ai because generally ai development takes a lot of time or people value current processes if there is some kind of process which people value uh people do not want change then for the bringing in ai to change the process or change the workflow is probably not a good uh, idea in this case okay now that we understand some of the possible ai and non ai applications how can we understand which ai problem should we pick so uh, some of the fundamental question, questions that can be asked in this respect is who are the users what are the values uh, how which is the problem that you want to target or you want to solve from there how do you want uh, that problem to be solved and to, like when do you say that the experience is done so an example of this uh, if you if you see this uh, picture this is actually an example of this uh, in this respect is uh, if you see uh, if you know a little bit of history of netflix netflix became famous with their house of cards series uh, that came uh, that started with netflix now when they were starting out with this uh, well, before starting out uh, uh, with this series uh, netflix generally bought uh, movies and series from other producers they did not have original content and then they were thinking of producing some kind of original content of their own so what they did is uh, this is basically a picture of 
there was a UK show of House of Cards, and so they saw saw the number of users uh, that were seeing the UK show. They saw they saw that there was a correlation between those uh, users and the users uh, that were generally seeing political dramas and television movies. So then they decided that uh, going ahead with the uh, House of Cards uh, uh, series and um, casting Kevin Spacey in that role, which again, as you know, uh, came out as a huge hit. So. Uh, when you when you uh, see data, when you see a problem, you try to understand what are the values of the users. You try to understand who are the users, and you try to understand if uh, applying AI to this problem, if using AI in this problem will actually solve the problem. Uh, so there are two types. There are basically two types of uh, AI products that can be built. One is uh, creating an automation product and one is creating an augmentation product. So in automation product, uh, how can we understand the difference between them is uh, if we uh, automation products are generally difficult and dangerous and generally experts or people who are working in that area have a correct version of things. While it is in augmentation product, uh, the task that uh, the product is trying to target carries social capital and people do not agree on the current version of things. For example, uh, robots are very much utilized in the car manufacturing company, in car manufacturing uh, plants. Generally, companies have a current version of what is the car that is going to be built. So that is why uh, this is basically an automation uh, process. But uh, in augmentation, maybe in, um, it's, a, it's a painting helper uh, application in which it uh, maybe helps the uh, painters to create uh, different kinds of uh, uh, paintings. In this case, uh, painting as, an, uh, as, a, uh, uh, as a task carries social capital. And, the, and painting and the beauty of painting is a, is a subjective uh, uh, matter. So it does not have the correct version of things. So uh, you need to understand if, that what are you trying to, uh, the product that you're trying to build is in an automation and an augmentation or an augmentation product and mixing between the two or in the same product trying to uh, give both of both those experiences at the same time is generally a recipe for disaster. Uh, the uh, communication that goes out becomes mixed and people don't get confused and don't understand what they should be using the product for. Then there is the reward function where right? we need to optimize for the long term effect of things by imagining the downstream of the products. For example, Facebook could not have imagined uh, the downstream effects of his products where probably privacy laws were broken, uh, um, people and uh, uh, the users of Facebook do not or are not happy with how Facebook um, creates or rather makes them feel, they make them feel shitty about their lives. So if Facebook would have thought about all these problems. Yeah, I agree. It is probably uh, quite hard to predict these kinds of problems. But if Facebook would have thought about these problems, I think they would have faced far less problems uh, currently. Um, going forward in this webinar, maybe we can take an example uh, product that we try to uh, we try to see uh, if we can implement our ideas on. For example, I let let us uh, think of a, a farmers uh, a disease uh, predicting application for farmers, where probably the farmers can uh, take pictures of uh, different vegetables and see if uh, they are diseased or not. Or maybe there are cameras. Maybe it's an it's an application where you have cameras installed over the farm, which automatically takes pictures over the time of the year or over the time of the day, over the time of the season, over the time of the year, and tries to understand if the uh, plants they are rotting away are diseased. Uh, and 
generally give alerts to the uh, farmers, thus giving them actions that they can take so that they have better yields uh, during the um, when trying to uh, sell those uh, uh, vegetables. So we can how to decide on uh, how could how to decide if the AI is uh, providing unique unique uh, value. So uh, the things that can be taken is uh, decide on the target users. So for example, in this uh, farmer application, we have decided that our target users is going to be farmer. So we should be specific about the uh, target users that uh, our AI application is going to target. We do a field research. We ask a group, group of possible users about the problem and we take value from them. We ask them if this product, what are the uh, problems and if uh, the uh, product that we are trying to build would be of use to them. Uh, we can also, uh, based on those feedback, decide on a solution. Now we can see if the flow, if the solution flow, if the workflow of the air product would be of use to them. And we are, we are specific about the solution that we are trying to build. Uh, an interesting aspect of this is uh, we take a wizard of uh, OS test. Mm, uh, so, uh, what the user of OS test means is that uh, you, before creating the product, you kind of create a shell of a product and we ask real users and basically uh, we put a, a human being in the background. So, maybe in our farmers, in our farmers application, uh, we have uh, a farmer click a uh, click a vegetable and uh, put it in the application. The application does not have the model in the backend yet. The picture actually gets sent to an actual uh, expert, and the expert predicts if the uh, vegetable has a disease or not. Uh, in this way, we get actual field reaction from the users and understand if the application would have would be beneficial uh, to the user so we note down the user reaction and then also uh, when we are evaluating the whole workflow we decide if a rule based solutions will work better or not rule implementing rule based solutions are generally easier and even in some cases rule based uh, rule based solutions are better than their AI counterparts. So we absolutely should uh, consider if uh, consider rule-based solutions to the problem as well. Uh, along those lines, I would like to also say that complexity is a cost. Uh, although this graph has been taken from a different domain where uh, basically it's uh, checking for operational risk, but it's also applicable <coughs> for AI products as well. If you are bringing, if you are bringing in AI, then you need to understand that AI will um, bring in additional complexity and should only be brought in if the value that it provides actually match uh, the operational risk and cost that bringing the AI will uh, or uh, doing AI development will bring in. There are nine dimensions of uh, complexity in building any AI product. Basically, there is the modularity, which means what are the different models, what are the different interesting parts that are going to be developed for your application. You have the representational scheme, which means that the different states that uh, the workflow would be there, the different states that uh, the user would go through. <coughs> then we have the planning horizon for each intelligent agent well, how far the uh, agent would be planning ahead, how far the agent would be predicting for. You have the uncertainty in the whole, AI, in the whole uh, context of the AI application. You have preference. What is the preference that intelligent agents will go for and will uh, work against? You have the number of intelligent agents in your whole uh, uh, product space. Uh, how the agents would be learning and would be becoming more and more intelligent. You and uh, of course there is a computational limit. If something needs to be done in one second, and uh, the uh, AI model takes one minute to 
um, come up with the best solution then maybe the best solution is not going to work it you have to come up with a solution within one minute if that is what is required computational limits are actually very important in uh, creating ai products and then lastly you have the interaction between all the top eight uh, uh, dimensions when creating an AI product, you should be very careful that you are actually bringing in these additional nine dimensions of complexity into your product. Uh, software engineering by itself is quite hard. Uh, of course, uh, there is a difference between automation and augmentation. Generally, automation tasks are uh, easier to implement. You just see what is the current process and then try to repeat the process. Augmentation tasks are generally harder to implement. Mm, a good way of bringing augmentation or rather solving and creating uh, augmentation is maybe you can ask an expert in the, uh, in the field uh, and then ask them what are the tasks that they will be happy to delegate to a third part, uh, uh, to an assistant or is a new newbie that is uh, coming to the craft, uh, what are the tasks or what are the things that uh, the expert would be teaching first to the newbie. Those are generally good ways of uh, understanding the kind of uh, augmentations that you would want to build for your users. Uh, along uh, those lines, uh, this is an interesting uh, fact, which is that uh, robots cannot sew clothes. Uh, I gave an example of robots uh, being used, widely used in uh, car manufacturing because that is a correct way of building, uh, because there is a correct way of building cars. But it is very, it has been found that it is very hard to build clothes. Robots cannot match the dexterity of uh, human hands. So all the clothes uh, that you wear were actually stitched by a person. Uh, the price of clothes is uh, low yet because they are sourced from low income uh, places such as India and Bangladesh. But once uh, the income in these countries also rise, then I guess our clothes would also become more expensive. Then we have the reward function to think of. Uh, generally, true positive and uh, true negative cases, for example, in our, for example, in our uh, disease predicting uh, application. Uh, if the vegetable has a disease and you are uh, predicting that it's a disease or if the vegetable does not have a disease and you are predicting it, that it does not have a disease, that is fine. But what happens if the, pre uh, if the vegetable does not have the disease and you are predicting the disease? And what happens if, uh, because machine learning models will fail in, uh, they essentially are statistical models and they will not give correct answers in all the cases. What happens if they give wrong? They give wrong answers. Uh, so you have to be very careful of the uh, kind of fallout that would come from those wrong answers and think carefully um, what those wrong answers lead to. Uh, you can optimize for uh, precision or recall. Precision uh, basically means that you try to capture all the or rather whatever you try to capture as many right answers. Uh, as possible. But the disadvantage is that it will miss some true positives. Similarly, you can you can probably optimize for uh, recall. Uh, basically, it will try to capture all true uh, positives. Basically, in our case, uh, for example, uh, in our disease predicting app, we would want, probably want to uh, go ahead with or rather uh, optimize for if the plant has a disease, then it should definitely uh, predict that it is a disease even though what may happen is that if the plant does not uh, have a disease it will probably say that uh, it has a disease in some cases so optimizing for precision which means that we are optimizing for recall and optimizing for precision and recall is generally a balancing act that you need to understand and you need to uh, plan for before uh, creating uh, the product, what is it that is more important for you? Uh, of course, then there is monitoring. Uh, you need to, you need to, from the 
uh, get go you need to be clear about the kind of markers that uh, uh, saying if your model is uh, performing or not uh, things such as if too many people are downloading the app but never using it then probably the marketing strategy should be revisited or uh, maybe over the uh, users are not increasing as expected maybe you have created features but those features are not being uh, used by anyone so those are the things you should always be uh, keeping track of uh, different markers maybe you have uh, you can, uh, see the feedback that is uh, received in the play store or other apps where your product is deployed you need to keep track of the feedback that is coming from the users so those are the markers that you need to be very careful about and see if the you uh, if the users are actually getting value from your um, product uh next we have the data collection so you need to identify what are the high signal features that your ai application would be uh, would need uh, a good framework to do is that you can have who are the users what do the users need in this case and the users need to identify disease crops what the user action so in our case the user's action will be spraying medicine so the system you need to decide what is the ml system uh, in our case maybe the ml system also can be efficient and the picture of the uh, disease crop uh, uh, um, how will the um, ml system learn so the ml system would learn in the crop symptoms for disease markers what is the data required and what are the key levels in the data so on these aspects you need to start uh, or you need to understand and you need to define from the get go and you need to understand they are actually helpful and they will be helpful in uh, your ai application and you need to document them carefully so that your ai application gets better as time goes on then another aspect of it but people do not give much thought is privacy and security uh, local data laws and re uh, legal requirements should be carefully considered uh, users should always have the ability to opt out or delete their account this gives a greater uh, trust uh, uh, to the users also risk of inadvertently revealing user data should be carefully considered uh, an example of this is that uh, if you go to the uber application you have the uh, delete your account uh, in the uh, in below also uh, for example uh, something like your neighbor paul also reported plants with disease this is probably wrong but you can probably say some other farmers in the area reported similar diseases if your ai application is predicting for the diseases for example uh, what might have happened is the user might have taken the seeds uh, from paul and then it would just mean that uh, uh, he would he, he might just he might just think that paul is trying to sabotage his uh, crops just uh, so uh, thus bringing in a potential lawsuit for the company in the future so these kinds of things should be carefully considered when uh, creating the kind of uh, communication that you want to be sent to the users uh an example of uh, uh if the company does not handle local laws is uh, uh, if you have heard the recent news was that um, google was trying to illegally take data from uh, iphone uh, in uk and so google would probably need to shell out a huge amount probably 3 to 5 billion dollars to users in the uk which means that around 750 um, pounds each for data harvesting so it it might be okay for google because it's a huge company has a lot of money but if you're a smaller company and do not have uh, a lot of money these kinds of actions could probably kill your product uh, there are other aspects of uh, data to it which would which you need to consider to make your uh, ai application better you need to understand if your uh, data training process is over fitting on the data for example if your ai application is focused on the whole world but you are only training on data that is taken from either india or the us then it is probably 
uh, it probably will not generalize well to a global audience. You need to take care of fairness and bias. Is your uh, is your data uh, gender neutral? Is your data uh, or rather is your AI product gender neutral? Uh, is your AI product biased against uh, persons with special uh, disability? You need to consider those aspects of it. You need to source your data responsibly. Uh, you need to understand where your data is coming from and if the data will actually um, be of beneficial to your AI uh, product. You need to limit ambiguity in the whole process. And then you need to constantly uh, do model tuning and maintenance. As soon as the uh, uh, model is deployed in production, it goes, uh, it is uh, outdated and it continually starts drip, uh, dipping in performance. So constantly you need to keep your model to that. You constantly need to do model tuning and maintenance so that it is, the model is at the top of its game. Uh, you need to, uh, next is you need to set uh, expectations uh, correctly in the market. Uh, what is, you need to understand what is the user trying to and not work towards the general expectation of the user and not against it. You need to understand the models, uh, mental models or uh, the underlying assumptions that they might be having uh, regarding the uh, process. Maybe uh, a good way of seeing it if uh, you have completed this data, you can see what your computers are doing. Uh, so, uh, for example, you have the uh, uh, Swiggy uh, application where they actually started out as a food discovery or rather as a restaurant discovery platform. But after other players came into the scene, where there were uh, other platforms uh, such as Zomato and all were doing uh, delivery as well or rather food delivery as well. They had to pivot and uh, become Yemeni Gallat Kadia. Zomato Shayad. Zomato na start kiya tha as a... Zomato na start kiya tha. Gallat Kadia. Mujhe hi aata. Zomato na start kiya tha. Swiggy aane ke baad Zomato ko pivot karna pada. Anyway, thik hai. Uh, yeah. Huh. So what? Fill the step uh, by step. Uh, one way of starting with uh, new users is that you can probably have a step by step process where you do not give too much information to the novice user, and you do not give an overview of all the uh, features that uh, probably a novice user would not need, and just give a basic overview. Or focus on the utmost value. Uh, that uh, uh, the user would get. You can also see how you can form the process between different users. Uh, ex example of good communication is uh, the uh, left one. So if you see the right one, मुझे ये change करना चाहिए. गलत वाला left में देना चाहिए. Okay. So if you see, बाकी सब गलत वाले left में. Anyways, so if you see uh, in the right one, uh, uh, welcome to this best farming assistant app. This app uses sophisticated deep neural net machine learning. Users do not want to understand uh, if, if it uses neural networks or if it uses machine learning. And you should also probably uh, not tell that we believe that AI will be everything and so on. The users are only interested in understanding if the product is solving their need. So probably the communication such as the left one would be better. When you say that a farming assistant app to assist you in your farming to help you improve your yearly output. Uh, also for the uh, uh, new, uh, new users, you can give uh, starting such as connect to your farm cameras. So this probably would be a one-time setup which you would uh, need to do in the uh, start of using the product. User onboarding can also be done in stages. A possible uh, onboarding message is this is state your uh, product and feature and it will help you by giving the core uh, benefits. Right now it's not able to 
that uh, given the primary limitations of AI, over time it will uh, it will change to become more relevant to you, and you can help it get by saying the things that would probably make uh, the AI application better. AI applications, one good thing about, uh, or rather, uh, one thing that needs to be taken into account when creating AI products is that it needs to be designed for experimentation. Other ways of limiting complexity for the users is that only introducing new features when needed, and you need to always explain the value and not the technology. As I said, no one wants to understand. No one wants to know if your um, uh, well, application has um, great tech or not. If it does not solve the end users, they're just going to be irritated. That for all the intelligence, it is not able to uh, understand and implement its users. Another uh, aspect of AI is that AI products change with the user. That is one of the big differences between software, uh, normal software uh, products and AI products, which means that let's say I'm taking a Netflix uh, subscription. I would probably be forgiving if the Netflix uh, 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 recommendations in the start are not what I was expecting, but six months down the line or one year down the line, I would probably not be forgiving if it gives me uh, recommendations of movies and uh, um, a series that I absolutely hate. So uh, there are different ways in which you can do this. Basically, you need to get feedback uh, with personalization. So there are two different ways of getting feedback. One is implicit and explicit. Explicit is when you actually ask the users to give in feedback. Implicit is, for example, Again, in the Netflix, if I'm selecting uh, series and movies from, it's recommended. It implicitly tells that the internal uh, recommendation uh, model is actually working. If I do not, it means that the internal recommendation is not working. There is a graceful failure. You do not want the application to just uh, say that I'm not able to do anything. An example is this is, for example, uh, let's say, in our farmer's uh, application, uh, the app is not able to understand the uh, users, is not able to understand the disease. So instead of just saying we could not understand this and disease, this is a perfect opportunity to get feedback from the users. When uh, we say that we could not understand what this is, and then we can go to ask for expert help or tell us what this is, if we are confident, if uh, we can also, we can then get feedback from the farmers uh, saying that what the farmer thinks that this is, and then cross-check it with our internal database. We constantly, of course, are going forward, we need to constantly remind and reinforce uh, to the users what the AI application is able and not able to do, and adjust according to the user's preferences. Second thing about uh, the uh, communication with the users is uh, we need to specify, uh, we need to specify, be specific about our data sources. Recommendations should always be explained with actual user interaction. Just giving predictions is not enough. It needs to be supported with actual user interaction or rather action. Otherwise, it will not be of value to the users. And we need to account for situational stakes. What happens if uh, the AI gives um, false positive errors or false negative, uh, or has uh, false negative uh, predictions. So data sources can be explained in different ways. Maybe we give a specific output. For example, we can say that the pringle probably has form of blight, as the fruit has rotten areas. We can say why we are predicting that uh, the fruit, or rather the pringle, has the disease. Mm, or we can give specific, or we can give uh, general information that this app uses plant pictures and location uh, information to identify probable diseases. So uh, there are different ways we can add, clarify key elements, or we can give, uh, let's say, amounts of confidence. We can explain the data sources, or we can give model confidence displays and data visual visualizations. The last point would probably be more suitable for a, um, so you need to understand if uh, 
the AI product that you're trying to create is for an expert audience or for a general audience. Maybe for a general audience, you do not want to go too technical. Maybe for an expert audience, a more graphical um, with uh, charts and all would be more appropriate. So that is something you come up uh, as uh, with usability studies. So if you see here, uh, towards the last, we have uh, like a button where we have suggested control and remedy steps, which probably can take to the next uh, screen, which says the specific steps that the farmer can take um, so that uh, uh, the disease is comes under control. Model confidence can be either specific output or general output. So. Uh, either you can say that uh, you have you can give the best three cases that you can think of, or you can give one and say that wow, <laughs> <laughs> uh, or you can give probably a general uh, predictive that's saying that the app gives diseases with 80% confidence on average. So something like this, uh, possible disease from offices like give 80% confidence. It again depends on the type of users that you're going to target. How to uh, um, get, uh, moving on, how to get uh, better and better models as we go ahead. Our, our uh, ways of improving our model is using feedback and we need to understand how to explicitly get uh, how to get uh, explicit feedbacks? What are the different explicit feedbacks, and how and what are the different implicit feedbacks? The main thing needs to be that uh, thought here is that as much feedback as possible should be collected. This is a simple uh, or this is an over application method. We can get star based approach to get uh, explicit feedback, or we can get uh, implicit feedback. For example. In Google, if I give wrong spelling uh, and then it shows results with the right spelling, if I click on that uh, right spelling, it means that it's an implicit feedback that I actually spelled it wrong. Uh, one thing when dealing with uh, primarily with uh, automation uh, AI application uh, is that all AI recommendations and features should be should also be given uh, uh, the ability of uh, control back to the users. So for example, uh, so presentation? content. अभी ये बचा है हां ये कंटेंट काफी ज्यादा है जो अभी <laughs> नहीं मतलब मैं उसमें नहीं मैं सुन रहा हूं मैं नोट्स भी ले रहा हूं मतलब मैं वो, मैं नोट्स भी ले रहा हूं ऐसा नहीं कि मैं बोर हो रहा हूं मैं उस मैं उस सेंस में कह रहा हूं कि ये कंटेंट एक्चुअली काफी ज्यादा है काफी ज्यादा है अभी हाँ, वैसे 52 मिनट्स के आसपास हुआ है हां मतलब और प्लस वैसे 1 घंटा तो चलाना है मुझे नहीं एक घंटा आपको चलाना है बट मैं उस सेंस में कह रहा हूं ना कि स्लो डाउन कर दो स्लो डाउन नहीं कहूंगा मैं ये कह सकता हूं कि थोड़ा सा कंटेंट एग्रीगेट करें मतलब वो वाली चीज के ठीक है ठीक है मैं खत्म कर लेता हूं हां मतलब हां हां मतलब ऐसे ठीक है uh, if you see the Google, you can you know, privacy section, you can see that you can actually turn off and edit your search history and this will give you better recommendations if you're not happy with the current recommendations. Google. Uh, errors. Errors are very important when creating uh, AI products and you need and AI products will actually uh, bring in a whole new gamut of users or rather errors. You have to understand what is uh, users errors, what are the systems errors, and what are the contextual errors. You need to understand if the errors uh, that are coming in, how as uh, opposed to the user journey. So for example, uh, again, 
uh, if I am taking, if I do not know what Netflix is for, I may be searching for something else in the uh, Netflix uh, search engine. Uh, in which case, which may be okay if I'm a new user. So you need to understand how far along the application is the user as well. So error sources basically are, uh, uh, you will have mislabeling errors, misrepresentation, learner errors, boundary errors. And then you have your normal input errors. Uh, you may have irrelevant and system failures that are generally from software engineering. Basically, a lot of uh, training data are mislabeled. Uh, if you see in uh, the CIFAR application or rather uh, data source, uh, there is, if you can find all these pictures are cat label pictures, but there is a frog here, if you can find it. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's good. You can Actually, I will not time dunga ni. Yeah, I Actually, I Actually, matlab tum main dikha dunga to pura samajh mein aata hai ki ye frog hai. Are ye ra, theek theek ra. Ye last row mein ha, last row mein ha. Ha, ye frog hai. Theek hai. Ah, then we have misrepresentation. For example, the image of the left is clearly meant to mislead. There is no y axis. Passing similar data to a machine learning model will give erroneous results. You cannot have uh, somewhere where um, the data is not scaled well. Uh, learner errors are basically uh, something like, uh, so in the real world, if you take an example, uh, someone who is uh, French has uh, tough in understanding or has difficulty in understanding English uh, language and English uh, pronunciation. We have similar, we have seen similar cases when coming from where for someone coming from uh, some other native language to uh, probably our language. So uh, in uh, machine learning, for example, uh, an NLP model trained on English language would, or rather a AI process that is there for English language would probably not uh, transfer well when we are training it on uh, Chinese language probably. And then we have the boundary errors, uh, smoother decision boundaries so uh, generally in when we are doing classification we are generally trying to uh, see what where is the decision boundary between different classes of products so a smoother decision boundary means lower variance but higher bias when creating um, the understanding, uh, or understanding uh, which uh, product goes to which class of course uh, this is not the end of the world Failures can be seen as opportunities to understand or to get feedback uh, from the users uh, and thus make the model better and better. Uh, of course, give return control back to the user whenever possible, whenever uh, there is a request and always assume malicious content. So for example, in the Uber application, uh, if you are probably in a big uh, uh, area, you can actually hover the point to a specific uh, point in the in road where you want the Uber to pick you up. This is giving control back to the user. Also, you can uh, also you need to always assume malicious content. For example, when Microsoft went ahead with the table, uh, the users learned, users understood how the table learned and made it racist. So you need to be very careful about the AI application that you are trying to build. Um, and lastly, we are towards almost towards the end of the session where we uh, think about now that we have understood the how to uh, create the context around the AI products. There are various tools that are being used to, uh, today. There's the Cloud Autumn uh, ML, Microsoft Azure, in open source you have Keras TensorFlow and PyTorch, but the main challenge when uh, deploying AI, AI loads, workloads is along data volume and quality, uh, along data management and along the skills gap. Compute power and how to create models is generally not uh, the biggest concern. So that is 
what uh, as a uh, product managers you should be more focused on uh, finally how do i start basically I recognize that you have a few weird uh, weirdness points to spend basically deviating from the uh, setup uh, workflow would uh, probably uh, you need to very uh, be very careful about the deviations from the setup workflow that you are trying to bring into the market uh, clean up and set up good baseline practices in your internal team basically starting small maybe rule based and then you can go up from there collecting as much data as possible and keep on collecting data not losing out on data as at all and have patience and uh, depend on evidence based growth so that's it uh, for from me uh, i hope this session will help you in creating mind boggling uh, air products questions from your end <laughs>